Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another system design video. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you how to build web APIs using the code first approach using Swagger 2.0 with an example in Go. So what is an API? An API is a type of software interface offering a service to other pieces of software. So if we put this in context in our real life will be when we are hungry and we go to a restaurant and we're trying to buy some food. The first people that we need to talk to will be our ser the servers, uh, either a waitress or a waiter that then communicates our desire to eat something. In this case, will be a burger to the chef. The chef will come back, build it. Well, not build it, prepare it, cook it, and then give it back to the server or the waiters or the waiter and then send that back to us and then we will be leaving the restaurant hungry and not feeling hungry anymore or rather feeling satisfied and not feeling hungry anymore so if we transform that real life a scenario to what we have the servers will be the api and with in an industry what this means is that Devices like, for example, a desktop, um, desktop computer desktop, maybe a mobile phone, and maybe some IO, IoT device that is connected to the internet can communicate to an API, in this case a web API, uh, and then access some resources that could be maybe a database, maybe some other kind of information that is stored and is somehow behind the API. Now, what is the code first approach? It's a traditional approach that consists in coding the API directly and where the documentation is generated afterwards. Now, I mentioned the documentation because in this case, I'm going to be discussing Swagger and Swagger 2.0 specifically. So what is Swagger? Swagger is a, a, a specification that describes an API. Nowadays is known as OpenAPI 2. I cover OpenAPI 3 in a previous episode. I will be leaving the link in the description if, if you want to see that video. So like I said, this is an API description format for REST APIs. Typically, you can use it in either JSON or, or YAML. Uh, I like using it in YAML, but obviously sometimes you need to make this available via an endpoint in JSON. What is going to be available is um, for this uh, specification for you to document will be the endpoints where, uh, which are your HTTP routes, routes your HTTP handlers uh, followed by operation parameters which are literally the inputs that you're receiving the payload as well as the responses that you're sending back to the to your clients and some other things like authentication methods contact information licenses and information like that now Swagger is not the only way to document APIs, web APIs. There are another ones, po another popular ones like Raml and API Blueprint. I will be leaving the link to those websites in the description as well. This is not a, um, a complete uh, description or introduction to Swagger, but rather the concept of code first APIs. Now, if you are interested in reading something specifically, maybe you want to read a book, there are two books I like to recommend. One will be the design of web APIs and the other one will be irresistible APIs. The link to those books will be also in the description of this video. Uh, and both were published by Manning a few years ago. It's a good read for, for sure. Now, what comes next is the actual example. And I will talk to you in a few seconds. As usual, the link to the code will be in the description of this video, so feel free to check that out. So one thing I can recommend you is you can go ahead and clone it, pause the video, clone the repo and come back. Because this time what I did is I added two folders. One will be the start and the other one will be completed. And the start includes the basic, the boilerplate that I'm going to be using for demonstrating the code first approach and the completed will be the final implementation that you're going to be seeing in the end so if we go and change the directory to start and we open up our main.go you will notice that i am first of all i'm using this package called gorilla mox and what gorilla mox is is a http router that is extremely easy to use and supports a, a lot of nice features that again you can use and you can implement using the standard library, but I like using this one because it's sort of like, a, it makes your life a little bit much more 
a little bit much more easier anyways so the way it's implemented i want to give you a quick walkthrough there is a router using the stand uh, not the standard library the gorilla mox package and defines two handlers one will, one of them will be users and the other one one will be users for getting users and the other one will be users for creating users and one thing i forgot to show you and i will show you right now is the documentation or rather the requirements that we are asked to do now the in this in this hypothetical example we are going we are asked to implement an api with two uh, endpoints one of them for creating users one for one of them for getting users like i just showed you a while ago and the validations are uh, applicable to the uh, model or the payload that we're receiving the name has to be at least five uh, minimum the length will has to be five characters and for the birth year will be the the minimum will be 1900 and the maximum will be this year 2022 now i am skipping a few of the validations because i want to show you the specific um, implementation that we have right now but i will be co coming back to that specific piece so stay with me so i have the router that again is just returning a response using json marshall and then the another router that is using uh, not using json marshall but rather decoding that value that is coming in the body in the request and just printing out uh, created value and whatnot so if we run this and then do a curl um, yeah curl x which is for getting uh, for indicating the verb in the um, in http and we do users you will notice that it's going to be returning the values that i have in the get endpoint the list users which at the moment are hard coded but the whole point of this is not showing you what you're going to be implementing in the handler but rather what comes afterwards now similarly if we use a post and we pass in data and we say hey the data will be you know user or rather name uh, hello and then birth year will be i don't know 1970 and we close it it will be just printing out what i just sent so it's just working now when we're talking about code first uh, we already implemented the api right it's ready to go but then we're told hey we need to share this information and this api with somebody else what should we be doing okay so we what we have to do is use either um, swagger raml blueprint and some other way to create documentation from your api now what we're going to be using is we're going to be using swagger in order to install swagger you need to use this command now this works for 1.11 1.17 rather and uh, but if you don't you're not using go, on, go 1.17 you need to use go get instead now i'm going to be running go install i'm going to be stopping this my swagger will be available in the path because i'm also using this cool uh, tool called div dear env that allows you to, to somehow sandbox um, environment variables and therefore you can indicate your own path and therefore you can indicate your own go bin and you can indicate your own tools that are applicable to your project instead of making them those available across the board for all the users or for your own user in the path with that being said what we have to do next is we are going to be using the documentation that is coming from the GoSwagger website and it's pretty straightforward the only concern the only thing i i think uh, in the beginning you're going to be struggling if you're not familiar with swagger is the different options that are available for all the different things that you have and i will be talking about it in in the conclusion so please stay with me the important bit about this is that we want to generate documentation from the existing code that we have so go swagger allows allows us to do that now in the documentation if we look at the specific things there is this called swagger meta and this it indicates the basic details that is going to, are going to be available for your api when that is shared and made available to your customers so literally what we're going to be doing we're going to be copying and pasting all of this we're going to be removing a few different things and we'll be explaining you along those lines what is going to be happening i'm going to be creating a new file called swagger dot go and i'm going to be just pasting all of this oops didn't copy uh, pasting all of this above the package main i'm going to remove in uh, for now just leave it you know default uh, values i'm going to be removing the schema localhost base path is one version 
on of this, uh, generating and uh, producing and consuming JSON. That's okay. Security, there is no security. Uh, remove all of these extensions. Nobody cares. We don't need any of that because we are not using any of that. And for this example, this is the basic uh, details that we need. So we need a package description, some schemes, which will be what um, uh, scheme we are using, uh, the local host, and the base path version. What is consuming, which we, what is the format that we are receiving, and what is the output that we are using, the format that we are using as the output. Next will be documenting our operations. And operations are literally the handlers and as well as the models and models are what is included in the responses and also in the payloads for that again we go back to the documentation we look at swagger operation and we just again copy and paste all of this and the first one i want to do will be the one for creating an user the the thing that i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be pasting the code uh, that i use copy in here and i'm going to be renaming it this to indicate hey this is a post this is a users and i'm going to be calling it post user to just for demonstration purposes i'm going to be adding uh, include documentation obviously in their life you will be doing this uh, we are going to be producing yeah an application json the parameters in this case will be uh, the value that we're receiving, if you remember, in the swagger, in the swagger, in the handler, we are receiving a JSON value that is coming in the body. So we need to indicate that. So the name will be, uh, it doesn't matter because it's in the body. So you can indicate it's in the body, it's required, uh, it doesn't matter. And the, in this case will be item ref if i recall correctly item ref and then definitions and then in this case would be user now you you may be thinking hey where 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 is where are you getting that information and there's something that that in the beginning is uh is tough to to get to understand and i will be leaving the link to the specification as well because in the documentation of this ghostwagger they are assuming that you know all of this so it's literally actually I made a mistake it should be like this ref definitions um, and it's something that perhaps in the beginning is a tough is tough and something that you need to uh, understand clearly all right so we have a response is 200 description user response that's fine Okay, so what we did is we copied over the documentation that we need from, uh, not the documentation, the tags that we need from Ghostwagger that are going to be applicable to our specific uh, handler. Now, what we're going to be doing next is, again, we're going to be copying all of this used to speed up the process. We're going to be pasting this again. It's going to be called uh, get. It's called users. And it's called uh, get users. Again, insert documentation, which if we will be doing if this were uh, a real uh, actual API that we're trying to describe. And then the responses will be an array of user. Now you, you might be thinking, uh, where is this definition user, the definitions users user coming from and that is the next uh, comment or tag that we need to define called swagger model and in order to do that we just have to copy this value swagger colon model and paste it next to the struct type that we're going to be using as the model in swagger all right so what we need is, is going to be required because that's the documentation that we requested before and the mean length will be five and as well as the the oops this will be length and for the birth year will be the mean will be 1900 and if you remember the max was indicated as 2022 so with this we can start 
uh, this is what we need basically for using Coswagger and generating the documentation that we are going to be able to provide to our customers. One mistake that I made previously was that in the post handler, we need to use name because it's a required field. And also instead of using item, we should be using a schema and indicate the ref to the user model in this case. And we need to make sure that everything is indented correctly. Now, what we are going to be doing next is we're going to be copying this instruction to generate the specification, which literally means the documentation for OpenAPI 2, or rather Swagger. So we generate the spec, which will be a Swagger YAML in our uh, example. And this Swagger YAML includes everything that we need to, uh, sh that we need for sharing with our customers. If we get this in order to test it, you can actually go to this website called Swagger Editor. You can replace the, replace the content and it will show you uh, Swagger UI interface for a Swagger UI, <laughs> the Swagger UI uh, for accessing the endpoints that you defined before. Obviously this is not working because we are referring to the local host uh, host name which is uh, right here oops right here so it's not going to be working if we even try to click it click try it out however what is important about this one is that we can actually from here we can run and generate the models or the types that we need for actually apply the validations that we define in the specification so to rephrase it because we define some rules in our handler like for example uh, we have a definition right here that is called user if we go to the definition of user it says that has properties that indicate that have the following uh, fields and therefore the following configuration and rules now this is something that we can implement obviously manually that I clearly mentioned right here in this comment but if we generate the code that applies to the generated spec we can actually skip all that information now let's talk about what are the pros and the cons when using the code first approach when building web APIs so at this point in time in the video, you will be thinking, hey, I use the code first approach and everything seems to be working for me. So are there any cons? Yes, there are. One will be that there is no documentation outside of reading the source code or maybe taking a few of some of the plugins available in your IDE or maybe available in your language and generate some of the documentation from there. Now, another con will be that there are no unified guidelines. If two different teams build two different APIs independent of each other, and there is no guideline in, in advance, they could build these endpoints, these APIs, these responses and requests in a way that maybe doesn't match what you were expecting. Now, with OpenAPI, there is a way to describe what the uh, API is doing, specifically with Swagger 2.0 and OpenAPI 3, and that is the nice thing about OpenAPI in general. Now, what are some of the pros? The pros is that if you, you're using the code first approach, you're building your API quickly and you're making it available to your customers right away. Uh, it's easier for developers because obviously you know how to implement APIs. You don't have to learn new tools like OpenAPI, Swagger, and all the things the things that you showed you a while ago, or learn a new specification, how to describe this in advance. You just build the API, it's available, and you can use it. Now, that doesn't mean that you should be doing that. And in the next episode that is called Design First, I will be also covering a different way that I like it doing instead. I think, in my opinion, it's a better way to communicate the and implement the API that your customers are going to be using it's uh, more or less e easier uh, because you, you you can define all those rules in advance and you can generate the code that you're going to be using and therefore you don't have to duplicate the things that I was just showing you in, a while ago when you have an uh, the code that is implementing the spec uh, right the code that is generated from the spec and the code that is coming from your manual implementation Thank you for watching and hopefully all of this makes sense. And again, please watch the next video. I will be leaving that in the description. Stay, stay safe. Take care. I will talk to you next time. See you.